What's good, everybody, and welcome back to the channel for another episode of our Madden 23 San Antonio Express expansion draft only franchise, where we are here in week seven going up against our bitter rivals, the Kansas City Chief. As we see, we also have this rival game scenario. I believe the Chiefs are the one team in the division that we've yet to actually beat in a game that we played. I know we've beat them once in simulation, but I don't think I have beat them while controlling this team. So this is a very big week for us. Of course, every game in the division is big, but it's especially big when you go up against a team that just has the firepower of the Chiefs. Of course, we traded them Max Crosby, and he's become even better than he ever was as a Raider, of course. I think he had, like, what, 20 sacks last year? And so he's become an X-Factor, absolutely dominant. This team has just always been tough to keep up with. Of course, very hard to defend, and then is, we're just not a good enough offense to keep pace with how good they are. As, let's see, we have a broken finger here for Bethel. Not too big of an injury for us. Shouldn't affect the way we play as he's more of just a special teamer and backup for the team. I want to take a look at the injury report. It's been a minute since we've since I've hopped on the sticks. I had uh, I took the weekend off. Wanted to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Wanted to grind a little bit on that. And so we took the weekend off with the holiday as well. Uh, Vogel's back as our starting punter. Did remember that he was injured for a bit. Want to make sure our defensive line is straightened out. And it is, although Lloyd Leonard should be DT2, or 3, Rush DT3. Uh, I think I like Michael Franklin just a little bit better as our sub linebacker one. I think he's a little bit more well-rounded and a better tackler than Giles, who are for in a dime. I do think Michael Franklin's the best option as the solo linebacker just because of his superior abilities against the run. And they're both pretty similar against the pass as well. Speaking of Victor Giles, though, we do have an upgrade for him. Plus three zone. Puts him up. He's near 80 on zone already, which is awesome. As At 23 years old. Can we get the first ever win going up against the Kansas City Chiefs here while we're playing the game? That is something to look out for here. So we do get a home game, which is very nice. Devin Hamilton leading the team out of the tunnel. Oh, let's hope this is the last year he does that. Kind of previewed that there's a couple quarterbacks I like in this class. Of course, starting next episode is when we'll start taking a deeper look into the draft. Probably won't do quarterbacks first because that's the position that we're focused scouting. And so we'll learn more about that position through the regular season. So that might actually be one of the last positions that we deep dive into. But let's get this game underway. We will get the ball first here in this one. Andrew's back to return the kick. And not able to get too much. And out comes the offense led by Devin Hamilton, number nine. I feel like in the simulated games, he's regressed every year. He keeps getting worse, which is really annoying for the purposes of this series where we s simulate half the games where I guess 8 out of 17 so just under half this, this 
team has had to increasingly depend on the run game in order to be productive. Which is... I mean, fine when you have a player like Kavon Simmons. He only gets one yard there, but... Probably going to be the first 99 player ever on this channel for one of my teams. Especially considering we've kind of stopped doing Bears franchise. Don't know if we're ever going to pick it up, honestly. Kind of enjoyed taking a break from it. And we're going to try to hit... Eddie hits them there on the corner, and it's incomplete. Okay. Didn't think it was a bad decision there by Hamilton. Just not unable to make the connection here. Third and nine. I like what we see. Out of smart, we're going to... Throw an interception is what we're going to do. Oh, jeez. Put the face cam on for this episode and I'm choking. And that free rush there kind of went wide. Puts the boss in places. The incompletion. Not a great start to get our first win against the Chiefs. Oh, that's... That was just a bad throw. That was all on me. That wasn't on him. It was smart anybody else but me. Had to force feed our number one option there, third and nine, and obviously it didn't work out. Third and five here coming up for the Chiefs. And that's caught. That's the move. I know Alan Zar has about like five inches on Quincy Boston, probably. Maybe even more. But still, dude. It's Alan Lazard, it's not. No, uh, even like Michael Pittman, who's, you know, one of the taller jump ball guys. I don't know why I thought of him. There's got to be better examples. I just can't think of him right now. A little bit shook still after that interception to start this game. Oh, so nice. Obviously, we're going to be running the ball to start this drive. My favorite run play in the playbook. And I don't think we get too much there. Probably started sprinting a little early there. I just saw the hole and thought we could get big yards, so I just sprinted through it. Uh, I don't love much of what I see there, so we're just going to hit Hazel already. First completion for Hamilton, one of three for three yards. Oh, jeez. Third and fourth coming up. Like the stagger concepts, it's been working for us many times, and they will continue to work here. Lewis Smart underneath gets the first down for the Express. First and ten now coming up, up near midfield, gonna go back to the run. And that guy's a free rusher, that's not good. It's so hard to run the ball this year. I know I changed the sliders to make it harder to run the ball because I felt like it was too easy last year. Not that I think it's unrealistic that Kevon Simmons is out here balling. I just think it's... I don't think our offense is quite ready to dominate yet as we get a first down. Completion there to Eddie Hazelson. Nice catch for him with the defender right on his back. And so I moved the slider. I've been wrestling with the idea of whether or not I moved it too much though. I feel like we always start the game really bad, but then by the end, it starts to carry out look pretty good, so I'd never change it. But look, you start with four rushes, three yards. The guy like Kevon Simmons, he's what, 93 overall X Factor at 22? We're gonna hit Smart here, and he's gonna run away from the defender and get some yards down inside the red zone. Four of six for 55. Hamilton's done a good job of shaking off a pretty bad start here in drive number two. Again, it was my fault that he had a bad start. We're going to go to Simmons here, and he can't quite get the corner into the end zone, but it will be first and goal from the two. Try to tie this game back up at seven. We're going to see if we can't pick this one up on the ground. And stop at the one. You know what we like to do with the one, though. As an Eagles fan, 
with one yard to go. You know what we're doing. The Eagles are have a 100% success rate on QB sneaks. I know it's kind of like a cheesy play in Madden because you like guarantee the yard. But honestly, as an Eagles fan, it feels like in real life it works that way as well. You know what I mean? And so we try not to overuse it, but situations like that, I think it's more. As we tie up the ball there on the QB sneak, Devin Hamilton breaks open the first score of the day for us here in this episode. And we'll see Patrick Mahomes drop back out on the field. We're going to start here with a little bit of his own. I wonder what I would have... I purposely don't ever choose cover players just because I want it to be rating space. I wonder if doing that has like made him a terrible defender in Madden. I was never like super great to begin with. I think I like, did fine as like a user middle linebacker or whatever. But just I'm 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 out I'm out of practice now. I, I I've played like, like one snap of coverage this man. <laughs> so probably might even be worse than the CPU at this rate. Gonna try to get on the blitz here with Michael Franklin. Get some free rushers for the screen, and we get enough pressure to force the incompletion and the fourth down. Nice stop by the beat. And we'll get the ball back with the opportunity to take the lead as why is Reza still in this game? And does have a tendency to keep players in the game for way too long. I was so relieved to see that they finally removed uh, Kaepernick. Holy. Adam is like a top 20 quarterback for so many years, man. It's so annoying to see one of the teams out here balling with Colin Kaepernick. As we try to get the edge there, and we will. It won't get us too many yards. We'll go six. The best run of the day thus far for Saints. I'm going to go right back to him here on second and four. And just kidding, I didn't realize it was Donald Holmes until he had the ball. Donald Holmes with his first carry of the day gets seven more. Nothing to do for the play action here. The running game is picking up the pace. Maybe we can throw him with some play action. And we got instant pressure, but we do get it out to Luis Sanchez. Honestly, I didn't think we'd be able to do it. We were instant pressure there. Second and inches coming up. Gonna go to Donovan Holmes once again on the ground, and they send. I can't pick up. LB Blitz one A. Third and one. Still feel like this is gonna be a run for us. So it's the bread and butter of this offense. It's what we've built around here in the last couple of years, ever since we drafted Kevon Simmons with the top two pick in the draft. Of course, not the first uber-talented running back in the last several years to go at number two. Honestly, that's a game quite a lot like Saquon Barkley as we get sacked there, which is obviously important. Second and 20. Let's go. Tried to get a play down the field, just didn't have the time to do it. This pass rush is relentless. We got a man open, and that's Slayton down the field. We're going to pick up the sack yard and a lot more. 79 to 100. After 0 and 2 start, he's hit his last seven. Hard to be mad at Devin Hamilton's performance today. Maybe should have run that, but I like what I saw from Smart. He's got the touchdown. San Antonio Express will take the lead. Usually, when I see a box like that, I like to switch to the run. But not when you have a vertical route that looks good from Lewis Smart. You get a look like that, you have to take it. And we did for the touchdown. Let's take another look at it here. Just, that was a nice ball by Devin Hamilton. Just put it right where it needed to be for Smart. You know, I've given him a lot of crap on this series. Look at that a little acrobatic move there by Smart too. We got a bit of... 
thumbnail action, possibly? I don't know. Anyway, we will take the seven point lead here early at home against the Chiefs. After an awful start, we've really bounced back, I must say. We take the seven point lead, 136 left here in the first. Back on the return, and oh, Juju is number nine. I, that is not Juju Smith Schuster, though, this returning kicks for them. Juju is nine on the current Chiefs team. And Josh Jacobs has a lot of room, and he's past the first down to the 40. Very well blocked there by the Chiefs. I got an itch on my head. I got a scratch. One minute. Stop there by the D. Four of seven for 19 yards. Third and ten coming up for the Chiefs. Can we get yet another quick stop? This will bring up the end of the first quarter. I don't believe they'll snap it. Oh, they will. And we can't get the stop. Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's out, dude. Kind of hoping that Lewis Smart can surpass Travis Kelsey and what he's been as a pro. That's a tall task, though. Probably needs a better quarterback. We're going to do it. Of course, the Chiefs very heavy with the pass on the pass run ratio. Despite Josh Jacobs doing a really good job when they've given him the ball. Of course, he's the other guy that we gave them. Like, I get the reason that I gave our division rivals, like good players because it increases the challenge but geez did I need to do it to the like the Chiefs and the Chargers name. I'm like the reason that the Chargers have a 91 rated offense because they have two weaknesses and I killed them both <laughs> with Colton Miller and Darren Waller. Fourth and one coming up. We do get the stop and out trots for the field goal, which he misses. We'll take that. First and ten now. We can start at the 45-yard line. And we got a man open over the middle. That's Rambo, and he's rumbling. Mostly sideways. Thought we could maybe get a corner in there, we ended up not being able to. That was not the fast guy, not slow either. Run one of our favorite route concepts here in Texas, and man, Sanchez gets absolutely obliterated. We get it to him late anyway, though. I'm gonna try this jailbreak screen. Last time I tried it, it didn't really work, but I also ran like outside. Yeah, if you run inside, you can get some yards. Yeah, you gotta run towards the line that was blocking for you. And like that really work. I kind of like it. Maybe we'll see it run a little bit more. I'd love to see it run for like. Man, these flat routes just don't work in Madden like they should. Like, I should be able to hit the guy in stride and he just runs and turns. He doesn't, shouldn't have to turn around, stop his momentum. I shouldn't have explained the play while I'm in the close guard because I'm obviously distracted there. What? What I was trying to do was look for replay. Oh. I saw him open. I wanted to lead him up the field, like up the sideline, right in that area, right between these two defenders. I know that I know that throw doesn't work at men. Try to freeform. Is freeform not LT? Or maybe I did freeform and it was just an awful pass. Oh, 
wide open over the middle is Sky Moore and the his stick from Morris Morgan. Can't really expect a hit stick from Morris Morgan to work. Doesn't. Hit three man rushes in men 23. They're so bad. That boy was wide open. He was naked. If he had thrown that accurate, it might have been a touchdown. And that's going to be thrown into the ground. Third and ten coming up. I don't know why I said naked. So weird. But he was. He was wide open. Over the middle field. Nobody was there. And that's third and ten. Stop for the defense. Once again, defense showing up a lot. You know, I was debating with myself whether or not putting up for more question runs is the move, but just based on the how filling the holes in our defense has made the play so much better here in year three, it's hard to be mad at what we did last offseason. As we're now approaching the midway point of the season, so there's a, a decent enough sample size to say the defense has definitely improved. How many points would we have given up this, this time last year? Already. I'm trying to build over this. Didn't move in. Didn't really look out for me. But. Second and two coming up. You see a box like this. You switch to a run. Get a five. First down express. Let's just get it right back to him. My favorite inside zone formation because we usually get light boxes like we see right here. And, oh, I guess wrong. I thought you tried to go inside. I went outside. I went outside. Off the block. That's unfortunate. So I thought, I thought like Hazleton would double team on the outside, forcing him inside. Hazleton moved on instead. Got flushed out of the pocket there. Oh man, it's tempting to run against this box. But we won't. It's third and seven. It's too long. It was like third and five. I would have and slightly is open underneath. Game of nine. Slightly's kind of been a forgotten man in the offense this year. He's up for contract next year. Of course, a lot of players are up for contract next year. As we'll get a little bit of a hole there for Simmons. Not able to get too much out of it. 10 for 36. Not awesome. Still plenty of time to rectify that though. Second and four coming up. Play action. I don't know why uh, Rambo was like sticking to his guy so much. He was going to be wide open. We get Hazleton instead. Still a pretty big game through the offense. Let's see it. First and ten. Looking to go to the play action once again. We got a man deep. Can we get it? Oh, we got bumped. Replay action in a row, question mark. Replay action in a row. We got a man open. That's downfield. That's Rambo and we miss. Third ten. Gonna try to hit Hazelton Nats. He crosses the face of McDuffie. That's exactly what I was hoping happened. It's kind of risky. Go back to the air. We've got a couple of uh, seat routes for our tight ends. I uh, don't really love either of them. We're going to go to Smart anyway, and he scores for the second time today. Had Simmons wide open underneath. Thought about taking it, but we really a Smart one on one in the end zone. Didn't look like a player was going to be successful, but uh, you take the chance with a player of Smart's caliber, and he hits it. Because it's that too. Perhaps the best two tight ends in football facing off today. Of course, not the first time we've seen this matchup. They play twice a year. We play one of them, at least, sometimes both. We played both games against the Broncos last year. Yeah, we did. Because they embarrassed us the first time out, and then we finished the season against them. So sometimes we'll play both divisional games. 
But I'd like to at least play one of them. Honestly, I prefer to only play one out of the two. It kind of adds a little bit more variety if you're playing. Cause it, especially because a, a regular season is nine episodes, not 17 like some other series. If we played all of our divisional games, like six of the nine regular season episodes every year would be divisional games, which is just too many. Having a third of your episodes every year being divisional games, though, not too bad. That's a nice, nice throw by Patrick Mahomes, throwing him up in the, on the route. First and ten, at the 38 now. And Mahomes oh, has missed a couple of shots that probably would have been massive plays if not touchdowns. Not something you can expect Mahomes to do. First and ten once again. Mahomes heating up. Of course, he started like four of seven, for like 19 yards. I remember that stat coming up. Now those yards per attempt are coming up quite a bit. I got to itch my head once again. I don't know what's going on. Oh. Let's go. And, oh, that's a nice hit by Morgan. Perfectly tied to the force of execution. That would have been just an absolute dot for Mahomes if they were able to complete that, though. Look at all those defenders that were around that guy. Mahomes gets sacked. Gustavo gets to him. Third and 22, 51 seconds remaining. Guess he takes the timeout. I'm not quite sure why you do that. I would just run out of the clock and get a field goal here. But instead, they're going to get the first down. That's why you do it, because you got freaking Patrick Mahomes, dude. Oh, what it would be like to have a good quarterback. I can only imagine. One that you can trust to make the risky throws. Of course, we took a risky throw for a touchdown last time. But I did that because I trusted Lewis Smart, not because I trusted Devin Hamilton. If I could just have Patrick Mahomes where I'm like, this might not work, but I got Patrick Mahomes. We're going to do it anyway, you know, stuff like that. What a luxury. What a luxury. Of course, we have two of those quarterbacks at least in the division. We kind of... Depends on what you think of Russell Wilson. Of course, he's done no favors to himself this year in real life as to how people think of him. And we honestly just can't compete at quarterback in this division because no matter how he plays in real life, he's an X-Factor in this game. Which is why we need to draft QB. I know it's way too early to say, talk about the draft, especially because we're trying to compete for the playoffs this year. But I am so excited for Devin Hamilton to take his last snap as an express starting quarterback. Andrews on the return, trying to get sideways here. His left play, just trying to see if we can get the edge around, bend around the edge, couldn't do it. It's fine. Got to improve on that 3.6 yards per carry. Um, I like what our defense has been doing. I'm, I believe we defended the deep pass as our weekly strategy. I just want to keep doing it. Following 10 points to the Chiefs at halftime when that, when that 7 point was off of an interception. Yeah, our defense is balling. I don't care what Mahomes' stats were. The fact that the only touchdown we allowed is when we gave them the ball deep inside their own territory is awesome. Also, 21 to 10 at halftime lead is no joke either. That's a drop by Travis Kelsey. You don't see that very often. Second and 10 coming up for the Chiefs. From the gun, as you might suspect, his offense. And that's another drop. What's going on? We don't even, we have the increased chance to block kicks. We don't even have the 
because they have trouble catching. And he didn't have trouble catching that on third down. That's a first down for Kansas City. What's his name? Rivers. I gotta be honest with you. I don't remember Rivers as a prospect. And we check. He's had to have been. Oh, I do remember. I think the Chiefs. Wow, that's a gaping hole for Josh Jacobs. Holy, a 20 yard rush. There was nobody in the picture there. What a beautifully blocked play by the Chiefs. Holy. I think I do remember the Chiefs drafting Rashid Rose for the solid, actually. It was like the first draft, second draft. It wasn't this last draft. First and 10 coming up for Kansas City. They're driving, driving. They're trying to pull this into a one score game here to start the third. That's one stop there by Walls and Giles. A couple of one syllable names. I'll say in terms of just like name value, we don't have a lot of like super sick names on the team. Wish we did. Like Timmy Reed is one of our best defensive players. I like Quincy Boston. Quincy Boston's a sick name. Lewis Smart. I mean, it's hard to say anything negative about Lewis Smart, but like, I wish he had a cooler name than that because he's a sick player. Kevon Simmons. Not bad. Eddie Hazleton, I do like. And that's pursued by Bramble, and he will get the sack. D'Angelo Bramble's actually one of the cool names on the team as well. We force them into a field goal attempt. Can we get a miss? Get this to a two game. Or maybe a block by here by Coleman. And we do get a miss. Wow, Butker. Passes bright these days, I see. I remember when Butker was a superstar kicker in this game now. Oh, we can't even make a kick. One for three. And we'll start here on the ground. Get a couple. Look at this box. When you use this formation, you get boxes like this. I love this. If you're a fan of the inside zone, this is the best formation. No, I got flipped by Rambo. I was trying to cut outside, but Rambo like must do that. Game. Oh, that's unfortunate. First and ten. This Hazleton threw an awesome block. And I went, I cut outside, but I'm pretty sure Rambo just like bumped me back in, didn't he? That's unfortunate. Also really like this play. Gonna go too smart here. Perfect accuracy. My cheeks, dude. I wasn't even catchable. Five coming up. I'm running the mesh concept here, and whoa, Hazleton got bumped so far off his route. We're gonna hit him anyway. First and goal for the Express. Whoa. Just a bit of On my screen, too. Ron Simmons stopped there. I don't know why my head's so itchy. I know that's like. Rose to take a shower. I did just take a shower. And Simmons. We're going to hit him underneath and he's going to get into the end zone. Touchdown Express. And the lead extends further still. Not the best day on the ground, but you know we're going to get Kevon in the end zone as often as we can. Turner's is actually rushing touchdowns. He's not ranked as highly as he is in yards. I don't know how to see if you get so many rushing touchdowns with their backs. It's nuts. Way more than you see in like real life. Like rushing touchdowns for like lead backs in this game. They're all like at 20 by the end of the year. Like all of them. You don't see how many 20 r r rushing touchdown seasons in real life, dude. I don't know. They're all not I like 20, but they're all high teams at least. 28 to 10. Wow, we. I've come out and we've gotten a pretty commanding lead. I thought, you know, the whole introducing the face game into the series, I thought I was going to choke. Start of the game, it seemed like I was going to be a, a choker, but... Uh, 
turns out, other than that. What a throw by Long. On the Zark defense. Yellow. Yes. Alan Lazard looks good when it's Pat Mahomes throwing the ball. Oh, I mean, he had him right before the game. He's good. I do think Mahomes is better than Rodgers. So. It's not like he came from poverty. Second and eight coming up. Timmy Reed get injured and I just forgot about it. Feels like an important piece of information that I like to have. It's literally our best defender. Wow, great blocking. See, I didn't lower the block, run blocking for sliders for the CPU, and this is what you're seeing. I did lower it for us. I don't know. We raise it just a little bit. I still want it to be lower than last year. But to be like, split the difference of where we were last year to where we are this year. I don't know. Maybe. Third and two coming up. Can we get another big time stop as they're at the edge of the red zone here? We can't yet. Still plenty of time. I mean, not plenty of time. They're in the nine. I'd love to keep them out of the end zone here, obviously. What is this formation? Andy Reid would never. So we could stand by the three, man. He's they're killing us in the run. They should just be. They should be doing it more. We can't stop them when they run. And there we go. Nice pursuit by Delvin Walls. Stops the touchdown. I got a play earlier that was very similar that I sold on. I can't remember if it was during the Vikings game though, which of course you guys weren't able to see. Because of the crushing footage, which is really annoying. For this last episode, still got a plenty of some medical stuff to appreciate the sport. Twenty-eight to ten. They're gonna kick the field goal, bring it down to a two position game. Bucker is now two for four on the day with his field goals. Still not great. But I mean, his two that he missed were like, what, 55 and 56 yard attempts. Not too easy. Of course, unless you have Welker, who holds the NFL record right now with 68 yards. I want this boy to hit a 70 yarder. We know he can. I didn't even max out that kid. And I had room. It's gonna go underneath. Or not underneath, over the middle is what I was said in my mind with my mouth and underneath though. Second and ten. Simmons with his X Factor activated. He's gonna get a nice bit of yardage here. Can't really break a tackle when there's three guys simultaneously trying to tackle you though. Third and one coming up. Here we go, here we go. I mean, I'm sure you're good. Madden doesn't play. Allow for that kind of shenanigans, though. First down run by Simmons. He's still going. Luis Sanchez down with him, bro. Not great. He's honestly like our third most targeted player. Maybe in our fourth. No, uh, he's targeted more than Simmons. Well, I think he's targeted more than Slayton, though. And that's, speaking of Simmons, we're going to get him out of the back of the game of nine, nine and a half, perhaps. Three touchdowns, two picks. Yeah, two picks. I feel like I've done a good job for the most part limiting picks in recent games. Today, obviously, not so much. Introduction of the face cam means return of the picks. But... As Simmons is now, this is what I'm talking about. He had, what, less than one yard of rush in like the first quarter. Now he's up just under five. By the end of the game, he usually picks it up, which is why I think it's not willing to switch the run block sliders. Even though 
there are moments of struggle it usually works out by the end of the game. It's gonna go underneath here too, Hazelton on his option right out of the back here. Then then. Back to the run. See if we can't get a close out score here. Although it's hard to say close out score against Patrick Mahomes, but being up by three scores in the fourth quarter, I'd be pretty confident. We've got uh, Simmons here on the little set route underneath. Third and three coming up. Gonna hit Hazleton over there. Got press. He's able to get the outside release. Nice ball from Hamilton. We got the first down. Inside the red zone now. First down 10 from the 13. Of course, back to Simmons, baby. Always back to Simmons. And the ice shade just can't get to the spot. Unfortunately, second and 11 now. He's out of his X Factor, too, because that's a TFL. Ugh. That's really unfortunate. And we're getting pursued by Crosby, but we're going to try to hit Hazleton in the end zone, and it works! And he has a touchdown! San Antonio Express. All three of our big three playmakers on offensive score touchdowns in this game. And this game is looking like a San Antonio Express victory here in Week 7 against the Chiefs to put us back over 500 on the air. Struggled to be over 500 all of last year. Seems like we'd go to 500, dip under it. We can get over 500. I hope we stay there. That would be great. Show a little bit of progress over last year. Even though, you know, it's owner no. Peyton Manning's goal to make the playoffs, all I want to see is year by year progression. We go, you know, nine and eight, but miss the playoffs, something like that. I consider it a successful year. That's a deep ball to Smore. Smore, Sky Moore, <laughs> Smore. And he hit, and he catches it, obviously, because it's Patrick Mahomes. I can't believe I just called it Smore. <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yellow! First and goal now, or the Chiefs at the nine. Awesome play. Set was at 77 yards of air distance. Travis Kelsey takes four guys to tackle him, but we do get him down at the two yard line. Sanchez injury isn't serious, that's nice. This is the Timmy Reed injury serious though. We're gonna find Timmy Reed on this team really suck. Touchdown Kansas City. Point cover coming up. They want to make this a 14 point game. Makes sense. And I was like caught in the, the middle there between walls because I wanted to rush. And I saw Travis Kelsey try to go back, but I ended up playing not really anything. Probably should have just committed to try to get pressure on Mahomes, maybe force him to throw. Andrews gets to 24. Chiefs are never out of it. Good game from Eddie Hazelson. Of course, recently cemented as a superstar receiver. Super sad you guys weren't able to watch that game. It was a good game. Hazelton was awesome. I mean, in terms of the quality of the game, as in like a close game, but as a game, not really. Um, but. In terms of like entertainment, it was there and try to outside, couldn't, couldn't get it done. 22 rushes for 100, yeah, just under five. In the high fours at this point of the game, so we're chilling, we're looking good. Come on, Simmons, of course, has his X Factor back, as does Lewis Smart. And come on, Simmons up the middle will pick up the first down for the Express. Just trying to run this ball out of this point. Give to come on Simmons. 
Steph Flowers was the guy for a moment there. Just gets five though. Look at this box. How do we not have a run play? I need to edit this playbook to have a run. I want a uh, run play on every audible package. This formation doesn't have one, which is not great. Being honest. Turn two, back to the ground. Can we pick this up with Simmons? We can, and we can pick up much more than that as well. Down to the 39. Just be minor. Okay, Second of eight coming up. Two minute warning approaching. We do have to run this play before it though, so let's just run it now. And oh I'm not able to get the edge. Sanchez plus Smart both out. Out here, Kenya crossing. I don't like any of these plays. I mean, I'd love Drive Flood. I guess we'll run it. I like it when Smart's running that route. I don't know about uh, this, this guy crossing. Of course, the injury timeout didn't bring up the two-minute warning either. We can make this a three-score game, though. With two minutes, three-score three score game. I think that make it safe, even against Patrick Mahomes. Nice. Perfectly timed kick. Perfectly, perfectly timed kick. I'll move over a little bit so the sun rays aren't in my face. Thirty-eight twenty-one. One fifty-eight remaining. Can we keep them from scoring one final time here in this game? Jesse, well, he's gonna get three hundred yards against this. Whatever. Still happy with the way the defense played in this game. What a throw! That was something else. Mahomes to Josh Jacobs. Picks up six. Go, baby. That throw by Mahomes. Jeez, man. What a, what a dot. Chiefs just keep marching. And he's going deep to Sky more and that's... Complete nice job by Morgan Morgan. It's a little bit scary there for a second, but we pulled through. Going to Skyboard again, and it's. Not intercepted. What? That guy. Yellow, yellow. First and ten from the 17. 31 seconds left. Still got some timeouts. They can go over the middle all they want, and they will here to Jacobs, who gets close to the first half, second in inches. Something about Easter. from Costanzo and that's towards the end of incomplete. Their hitch is coming up. Why Costanzo will be the user here. Third and inches, 20 seconds left. Can we get a stop? No, we can't, but we will keep it in bounds. They'll use their last timeout. So we got three plays to make them not get five yards. I do believe. Donzo gets to 
Patrick Mahomes, but not before he can throw the touchdown. Can't keep them out of the end zone. End up looking like a 10 point game. We all know what this game truly was, though. This game has been over for a minute. We took the lead in the first quarter and never let go of it. We're just a QE kneel away from our first victory against the Chiefs with me actually controlling the team. Second all time. Very nice one by the boys. Honestly, I think we played well on both sides of the ball. I think both interceptions this game were my fault. Uh, and other than that, I think we played a near flawless game. Forgot to look at the stats. That's my bad. We got some upgrades here. Start here with Jaron Lacey. What should we do here? Let's just work towards him being a scheme fit, even though scheme fit doesn't really matter in terms of XP. I don't know. Some people's motivations and tags, though, are for scheme fit. So I just like to, even though it doesn't give them the scheme fit boost or XP boost, I like to work towards scheme fit, if I actually agree with the scheme fit, at least. Which, with interior rusher, I mean, I want all three of those things to be high, so I don't really care. Um, not able to get over 90 with Ginger Direction. I want to keep pushing Elusive back until we at least get that. I honestly might just continue with Elusive back through 99, get power back up to 99, and then just for the sort of secure, obviously everything is uh, receiving back. Which, when is that going to happen? Is, we, are we, is he going to be in 99 in both uh, Elusive and power by like 24 years old? Maybe, honestly, it kind of depends if he gets elected to Pro Bowls and stuff like that. We got a couple breakout defensive players for this Week 8 game against the Colts. Let's see how it goes. Um, if I had to guess who they are, the defensive linemen... Would it be? Would it be Costanza to X-Factor? No. Bramble, maybe? So Bramble for... Defensive lineman, defensive back. Who would that be? It's not Boston. Morris, Morris Morgan. He had some PBUs. That's that's gonna be officially my guess, because that's a solid upgrade there for Quincy Boston. That is going to be Timmy Reed. It doesn't look like he was injured for multiple weeks, so that's good. Want to get speed rusher up for him. Plus one block shed, plus two finesse moves, and he gets over 85, so he's in the deep green on all three of those things, which is awesome. Delvin Walls. Yeah, my official guess for those is going to be D'Angelo Bramble and Morris Morgan. If we could get Bramble to star and Morris Morgan to superstar, that would be sick. I'd like that a lot. Luis Sanchez here with the upgrade. Devin Boykin. He has not received a carry for us. He is our backup player behind Simmons. I've just decided to give Simmons the reign this year. Um, of course, we still see some of Donovan Holmes. All the, what do you call them, formation subs that I did with uh, Jeremiah Black don't transfer over to Boykin, though, and I just haven't redone them. So... I could redo them. I just, I don't know. I'm fine with Simmons being, taking even more carries. I think he has the stamina. He's got the build. He's got the abilities to do so. And I kind of just was doing it with, um, with Jeremiah Black because of the previous year. I felt like he earned some, some carries because he had a solid year as a rookie with behind like, with like no passing threat and not a great offensive line. I think he still performed well, so I wanted to, you know, reward him with some carries. I don't feel that way with Boykin. I don't feel, you know, 
the need to give him some carries. Um, normally, I do more of these players, but since there's just so many and we've already done so much, typically when you get a big XP boost like that 2,500 XP boost, I just end up re um, doing a lot of the auto upgrading as we will focus on the quarterback position again. That's looking like our number one need. Going into next offseason. D'Angelo Bramble is the defensive lineman, so we're one for one on our guesses. Can he get up to star? He's had a superstar, or I guess a breakout, not a superstar breakout, in all three years. Okay, it's Delvin Walls, though. Wrong rookie defensive back. I mean, it was... We, our, our other two non-rookie defensive backs that it would have been are both X-Factors, so we knew it wasn't one of them, so I had a 50-50 shot, I guess, wrong. If we can get Devlin Wants a superstar as our safety, oh, that'd be sick. We can give him a like a hit hit power related ability. That'd be kind of nice. Got to make sure that we don't get either of these players injured in practice. As we are approaching, we're at the midway point of the season as well, so we have to consider this is when accru uh, fatigue starts to accrue. Forgot the word fatigue for a minute. And so you're kind of going to, we're at the point where we're probably going to have to alternate between half pads, full pads, half pads, full pads uh, every episode just to make sure we don't accumulate fatigue over time. So we are ready here for week eight against the Colts. They are one overall better than us on both sides of the ball. If I was playing this game, I'd feel good about winning it in simulation. I really don't know. I know it's been suggested to update the playbooks, and I actually have. We're, we're running Atlanta's offense. In simulation now, I said I was going to do San Francisco, but that would mean um, giving uh, Eddie Hazelton carries because they because the wide receiver one gets carries in the San Francisco playbook. I don't know if I want to be giving Eddie Hazelton carries, so I went with Atlanta because I feel like they have a good running game, right? Because it's Arthur Smith is former Tennessee for Derrick Henry, and they also have a big time tight end in Kyle Pitts. I feel like the I did that a couple episodes. I'm just talking about it now, though, and I feel like our simulated games have been better. So we'll see if that continues here in week eight. Still running San Francisco defense in simulation. I don't feel like our I mean our defense maybe hasn't played great, but I feel like our team plays true to its rating in in simulation, which is what I want. That's why I simulate half the games is so that if I outperform our team's ability and the games that we're playing were still held back by the simulation. So yes, I updated the playbook. Atlanta usually has good records too, so I feel like the Atlanta playbook and simulation is good. But I do believe, as we're updating some abilities here for Connor, I think what made him good out of the draft was his coverage, and what he's still good at, best at his coverage. So I think two coverage-related abilities is really the way to go with him. One for man, one for zone, because he's good at both. I think that works. So yes, we're struggling a lot in simulation. But we're still like one of the worst teams in the league, like 83 overall, 80 on offense and defense. We have played one team in the entirety of this series, two and a half seasons in, that we were actually rated higher than, and we did beat that team in simulation. Of course, it took overtime. So... I'm not mad when we lose in simulation because I want the simulation to reflect this, the strength of this team. I want to be held back when we should be because of our team rating. So we look at the mock draft here. Brandon Nash going at five. He's one of the quarterbacks that we're interested in. I was taking Malcolm Dunn. Um, Edge is a position I'm very interested in, especially if Bramble doesn't get his breakout. If he does, Maybe that becomes less of a need. Sean Rogers is the other quarterback. He's going all the way at 26. So I like 
our chances of getting one of the two quarterbacks that we like. Right now, I view them as fairly evenly. Maybe getting to know more information about them. And we'll kind of separate them. And if I like one over the other, then we'll make sure we get that one. But as I keep having to move further left. Maybe I should just shut my blinds. We'll do that, actually. I'll be off camera for like two seconds. <sighs> Of course, everything's going to be a little bit darker now, but at least I didn't even fix the issue. <laughs> it's fine, though. Of course, this game will be simulated. We have two breakouts. You'd love to play a game like this, but I am steadfast in one game played, one game simulated every episode. I really like this space. I think... I just think it's like r really a drag when you have like a lost season, like let's say season one was when we were what, three and 14. 17 episodes of that season, oh, it just seems like too much. I even lost patience with mine. I think I think we ended that season with eight episodes, right? Although that was more of a math issue combined with my lack of patience <laughs> than just my lack of patience all by itself. We do get the win here against Indianapolis. Nice game for Kevon Simmons. Um, nice game for Ezzy Hazleton. Smart, 5 for 41. But Luis Sanchez, I wonder if Smart got injured partway through the game because Sanchez had a, a touchdown of four catches too. So I think the tight end position as a whole, we take Smart being injured for part of it was good. Good defensive performance. Devin Walls will not get his breakout though, but Bramble will. So one for two on breakouts. Out of preferred Walls. Because I know I like Walls long term. Bramble's kind of up in the air. If I can get two picks towards the top of the draft, I'm probably taking both a quarterback and an edge because I like quarterback and an edge and edge classes both a lot this year. I think they're both really strong. As Wyatt Costanzo will get one more overall towards that 85. Still working on getting three players with Superstar up to 85, trying to get their second ability activated. Eddie Hazleton. Wyatt Costanza, who are both upgrading here to get within two overalls, and then Brian Pearson, who I think is still 82, so three overalls away. Roll out the red carpet, baby. Bramble is a star. How many XP? Just 5k. It's unfortunate. If it was 20k, it would have gone a long way towards cementing him as a long-term starter. And of course, uh, Walls doesn't get it, unfortunately. We we held we held them to exactly 100 rushing yards, but now that I think about it, 100 is just from normal to star, not from star to superstar, and also safety. I think it's related to passing yards now. Probably. Next episode we will have the Cowboys coming up. Uh, let's upgrade Bramble here. We will also start diving deeper into this draft. Um, you know, with the positional deep dives, probably starting with O-line like we always do. But if you're still here, thanks for tuning into this episode. See you soon with the next one, and I will see you then.